Now we are reaching the last segment of the quantum Hall effect discussion that is the resistance or the conductance quantization when you measure transport uh, through a two dimensional system at high or quantizing magnetic field. In the last lecture we looked into the landable density of states, the concept of filling factor, the Shebnikov D has effect. In this lecture, we will discuss the edge states, two terminal and four terminal transport, quantization of the Hall resistance and the vanishing linear resistance that is the Shubnikov D has effect a little bit more in detail. All right. So, so far we have been discussing the quantization of electron orbits in a two dimensional system, but we never considered the one aspect of practical systems that is these practical systems are not infinite in dimension in the plane but there are edges those are systems with finite dimensions finite width and finite length so when you consider the system got a finite dimension then classically you can arrive at an interesting situation in the classical ballistic regime that is the situation where you have edges or edge states or skipping orbitals in this picture what you have is you have a rectangular sample and there is a magnetic field applied normal to the plane and the, the electrons or the charge carriers will undergo cyclotron motion this is the classical picture okay now once the electrons reaches or those electrons at the edges they will not be able to perform a full cyclotron motion so by the time they reach the edge they will deflect back but again they will continue but again deflect back and they are going to run around the edges of the system just like a top when you spin it and if it, when it hits the wall it's going to come back and again you try to hit the wall you come back again it will try to hit the wall come back so this is like a skipping motion of the of a mechanical top so these states or these orbitals are called skipping orbitals so in the center of the sample in the middle of the sample we can call in the bulk of the sample the electron will undergo cyclotron motion and will keep on spinning there this is the classical picture okay it will keep on spinning there and it will not be able to move in any direction but at the edges this electron will undergo the cyclotron motion but it will not be able to complete the full circle it will deflect back from the edge and there you can see from this simple concept that you can get a current along the edge in one direction if you invert the field invert the change the direction make the field opposite then this will be moving in the other direction but the important point that you probably want to notice is along this edge the, the charge carriers move in one direction but along the opposite edge the charge carriers actually move in the other direction so there is a chirality and the electron which moves in forward and reverse direction they are at the opposite edges they are not at the same edges you will not find any electron here in this edge which will move in the reverse direction 
all those electrons which moves the backwards that those electrons will be at the opposite edge same case here also the here electrons will move in this direction but all the electrons in the other edge opposite edge will move in the opposite direction so the prime reversal of this electronic paths are actually broken when you apply the magnetic field okay so this is the classical picture of the motion of electron when you apply really high magnetic field and these states at the edges are called skipping orbitals classically but quantum mechanically those are edge states so let us now try to understand how are we going to get these edge states from our quantum mechanical picture okay so again as we just mentioned samples real samples are finite in dimension so in this case i have a sample with a thin channel and assume that these two broad regions are at the are the contact regions where you are injecting and removing charge carriers either electrons or holes okay now the energy of this electron which undergoes cyclotron motion which we already discussed that is n plus 1 by 2 h bar omega that is energy of a harmonic oscillator with a quantum state n all right now the total energy of the system of the electron in the system say the electrons are moving in the y direction so they are driven in the y direction by the application of a small voltage which you can assume is a very small voltage which is come very very negligible compared to other energy scales in the problem so that is this h bar square k y square by 2 amp okay and this is the quantized energy as a result of the application of magnetic field and i have another term here u of x okay that term comes from the finite dimension or the confinement of the system here i am not talking about any quantum confinement this is some kind of physical confinement where the electrons are kept inside the material they cannot escape out or the electrons will feel that there is a boundary beyond which these electrons cannot move they cannot move so here this is a rough three dimensional picture of the channel region here okay now as you approach the channel the electrons are going to feel a wall or a barrier beyond which it is the vacuum or beyond which it is outside the material where electrons cannot escape to so that we can consider as some kind of potential which is going which is going up and it becomes really large or infinity outside the material so there is some kind of a curvature how steep or how, how shallow this curvature or how slow this curvature all depends upon the details but there is a curvature and that is the potential felt by the electron that is u of x so in this case when b is equal to 0 this is the kind of bucket shaped potential felt by the electron when it moves from one direction other direction in the x direction okay here so you have high potential energy here then flat and again high here so you start from here to here that is the path now what that means is in this flat portion the bottom of this uh, bucket you don't have any u of x term but the u of x comes in picture as you go towards the edges okay so there are electrons here and there are no electrons here okay and the situation is when you have when you have no field or no, no magnetic field in the system 
and here is the Fermi level. And all the levels below the Fermi level is filled and all the levels above the Fermi level is empty. Of course, there is a small, there is a width to this uh, Fermi level because of the temperature, but that is, you can, that is very small because all these experiments have done at low temperature. Now let's consider what happens when you have a magnetic field. When you apply a field, this continuum states will split into lambda levels, okay, as shown here. Now, the energy is given by the condensation energy because of the field plus the potential plus this term is also there but for the time being I am going to neglect that because it is very small. So at the bottom of the well or, or at the, in the bulk you have only the, the condensation term n plus 1 by 2 h bar omega this term because this u of x term is not appreciable. But as you move towards the well, this term is going to pick up. So this also will get added to the energy. So all these land levels will, land levels will go up in energy. Okay, it will follow the edge of the sample. Now the Fermi level which is defined by the voltages that you are going to apply that is not going to change that will be fixed so these lander levels will go up and it will cross the fermi level only at the edges in this specific situation okay so at the edges you have lander levels which are states available for the electrons but in the bulk at the fermi level there are no states and there are energy gaps which are defined by the condensation of the condensation condition of the condition given by the short irrigation okay so in the bulk you can consider that the sample does not have any states for the electrons to go through so it is insulating but at the edges you have states which are the land levels crossing because of the rise in potential at the edges. Okay. So you have states at, at the edge for electrons to go through, but there are no states in the bulk. What that means, bulk is insulating, but states are conducting. Okay. So land levels cross the Fermi level at the edges. This is the message. And these states are available only for transport which is only which is which happens only at the edge so what we have now is the moment you apply a magnetic field the condensation will take over but you also have the potential added to these quantum condensed levels lando levels due to these edges and at the edge these land levels will cross the Fermi level, but in the bulk, they will remain inside the Fermi level. Okay. So you have states at the edge for transport and you have no states at the, in the bulk for transport. What that means is bulk is insulating and the states are contacting. Okay. So that is the picture we have. All right. Now, let us look into this problem a little bit more detail. So this is the picture we have. We have states at the edge and no states in the middle for conduction. So the condition here is I am having now three states marked S1, S2 and S3. Okay. So if you go back to the previous slide, these three states are marked here also. In this case, for S1 and S2, as we just discussed, the energy is given by this condensation condition. For S3, or any states along this edge, okay, you need to consider this U of X term also. So, the S1 and S2 states here, they are not going to feel 
any effect of this edges but the states along the edge when this lambda level is going to start going up this region they are going to feel the potential okay so that is a repulsive potential because this potential is trying to keep the electrons inside the work because this potential is going up so that means when there is a change in the potential then that is that you can translate that into a force term f of x which is the gradient of this potential minus w that is the equation for force so you can consider that edges at the edges the potential is going up but this action is like you are pushing the electrons into the work okay so with a force f of x given by minus del u so and now you have the edge states or the states are just because of the magnetic field that is normal to the plane and the force is perpendicular to the field direction because of the edge so what you are going to have is you have now a crossed field again just like the Hall effect okay so you have magnetic field in normal to the plane and force which is laterally into the bulk of the material what that means is the electron at the edge will undergo the cyclical motion but they also feel another Lorentz force which is perpendicular to both direction of B and also F that is along the edge for example in this case the force is inward the B is normal so the force or the velocity of electron will be in this direction here along this edge again the B is normal but the, and the, but the force is inward so the electron velocity will be here okay so similarly along this edge it will be here along this edge the velocity will be there that direction okay so there will be a drift of these states which is given by the again Lorentz condition where the direction is perpendicular both the field and also to the force that is along the edge because the force is normal to the edge or perpendicular edge so the electrons are going to move along the edge so what we have now is these Landau levels are normal orthonormal states they are orthogonal states okay they don't mix so but every land level will cross at the at the edge cross at the edge cross the fermi level at the edge so what that means is there will be one edge state corresponding to one land level but if there are three land levels all the three will cross at the edge here that means you have three states here okay so the number of states available at the edge for transport is the number of Landau levels present and that will be going in one direction along one edge and other direction along the other edge and the scattering between these two states are negligible and these two states are actually separated by the magnetic length lb but that is the this that is the profile or that is the aerial coverage of the wave function okay and but they don't interact so they should be separated by a magnetic field length lb so in nutshell what we have now is we have a situation which is very similar to the classical skipping orbital but we don't consider those as skipping orbitals those are states which has a propagating nature at the edge but which is localized in the bulk or at the center of the sample these are solutions of the Schrodinger equation okay so that's the story so far so let us now try to see or try to summarize what we have so far then we will 
see what effect this will have, this edges will have on the transport. So in summary, there are as many edge states as the number of landowners occupied. If there are three landowners, there will be three edges at the Fermi level. Okay. All the action and all the transport happens at the Fermi level. So if there are states available at the Fermi level, then only transport can take place. Okay. So we don't need to worry about anything which is too far from the Fermi level for transport studies. Now, the edge states are separated by the magnetic field length, magnetic length LB. And only one edge state is available per landowner at the Fermi energy. But you'll have on, e, on, the, on each edge. So this edge you have one state for per landowner level. This edge also you have one state per landowner level. But this here in this on along this edge is going one direction, along this edge is coming in the other direction. Edge states cannot backscatter. That is a really, really, really important point. Because backscattered, you need a state, the k vector, the sign reversed. But all those states are actually in the other the other edge. So if this blue colored edge need to come back, those electrons in the state need to come back. There are no states available here which propagates in this direction and all those states which propagates other directions along the other edge where it is, you have to cross all this insulating region to come here and that scattering is almost forbidden, it doesn't happen. Of course, there are devices where those scatterings are actually forced such as uh, quantum point contacts, which we will discuss when we discuss one dimensional transport, okay, later. But this backscattering of edge states are actually not allowed. What that means is, I can tell you this answer in one, one sentence, that is, the resistance for this edge states will be zero. But we will discuss that in detail in very soon, and then maybe in the next slide or next to next slide, okay. What that means is, they are, these edge states are perfect 1D channels for electron transport because this is one state, one state is one channel and that is what you will, you will understand when you will follow, when you discuss the landover beautiful formalism. That discussion we will not do now, we will do that later in the next one of the next one of the next classes we'll do this in very detail but at this point you will have to take my word um, that the two terminal conductance is given by landau orbital formalism that is given by e square by h into number of channels available into spin degeneracy or valid whatever the degeneracy you have in the system okay so this is for reflectionless transport. So the said states are reflectionless perfect 1D channels because you know, along the one edge you go in one direction, along the other edge it comes in the other direction back. So they cannot reflect here, the reflection or backscattering reflection happens on along the other edge. So these edge states are perfect 1D channels for electron transport. And the conductance of this edge is given by this formula where Every channel is E squared by H. That is actually the conductance, quantum or quantized conductance. And then the total conductance is you have to multiply it by the number of channels available into any other degeneracies present in the system. Okay, that's what this is. So, in summary, we have Transport happening in the system only at the edge. In the bulk, the no transport, the states are localized and the bulk is insulated. Okay, now let's try to figure out what is the current through the system, in what direction, what does it depend on, and what is the conductance and what is the resistance that you are going to measure when you have a two-dimensional system under quantizing magnetic field or the quantum hole regime, okay?
Now, let us come back to the one dimensional transport that we discussed for a while. Okay. So, I told that the one dimensional edge states are reflectionless, zero resistance, 1D channels. So let's consider two different situations here. Okay, so you have these states where we have states present at the Fermi level at the edges. Then you increase the B field. So this this when you increase the B field, you will push the level out of the across the Fermi level, out of the Fermi level. Now during this process, you will have a situation like this and later this will be out, this will go out after that. Okay. So this state has gone up, reached the Fermi level, but then this edge is gone out of the Fermi level. Okay. There are two edges present. Here there are three edges present but no states in the bulk. But he has states here but no states in the, uh, at the edges. Okay, so now what happens is when you have no states in the bulk and these edge states are perfect 1D channels, they propagate only in one direction. Okay, this will go in this direction and these edges will come back, right, other direction. That means the resistance that you measure when you put a probe say say you're trying to measure the resistance or the voltage developed along this edge here okay but you are actually running a current through the system from between these two, two contacts but you're also trying to measure what is my voltage drop along the edge or here for that matter here these edges okay we're trying to measure the voltage drop across this edge no along this edge now in this situation you have states at the edge okay the bulk is insulating what that means is you have no reflection at any of this edge this edge all the electrons go in one direction in this direction and this edge goes in the other direction okay what that means is no resistance. That means the resistance measured along the direction of propagation, that's what it is. This is you can call Vxx. This is also Vxx. For x direction, we assume that the we assume that it is a field, electric field direction, or that is the direction the current is flowing. Okay. That means you will measure zero resistance because there is no backscattering. Resistance need to come from backscattering. Okay. That means you can see this. Uh, green colored fluorescent green colored this curve hits zero resistance periodically as a function of magnetic field so this situation correspond to one of this bottom the valleys for the zero resistance region of this curve of this curve okay now when you when you increase the bay field you will reach a situation where this level is now going to go across the Fermi level. When it crosses the Fermi level, there are a lot of states scattered, the resistance is not zero. The resistance will shoot up and that is represented by the peak. And this happens periodically because every time a lander level crosses, you get these peaks. But once the lander level is crossed, you get a valley with a zero resistance. That is all these valleys here represent pictures similar to this. But the number of land levels will be different because that is the land levels are going to escape the Fermi level one by one. Okay. So in this case, you have zero resistance here, the resistance is high. So you get this oscillation, the STH oscillation, and this valleys of the STH oscillation should hit the noise floor of the measuring equipment, which is which you can consider as zero resistance, beyond which you cannot measure. Okay, and the measurement sensitivity is defined by noise flow. So when you hit the noise flow of the measuring equipment, you can consider that as zero resistance in this case. Okay, 
and that is also a measure or that is also sign of perfect two dimensional system if you don't have a two dimensional system you will still find this oscillation but this resistance value will not hit zero the zero comes from only this two dimensional sample which exhibit the one dimensional transport because the transport along the edge is one dimension so these edges are one dimensional channels so this two dimensional device perfect two dimensional system with the perfect one dimensional transport right along the edge that's what you are going to have when you have a quantum hole effect or quantum hole system okay so this sdh oscillations are a touchstone phenomena to check whether you have a two dimensional system or not then only you get a one dimensional transport these peaks are because of the one dimensional transport okay. these peaks and valleys these oscillations okay now let us look at what happens when you put multiple probes on the device okay now we are going to use the landover vertical formalism at this point you will have to assume that this is true this is actually true but we have not proved we will prove this in one of the class okay so the two terminal conductance is given by the landover vertical formalism that again as i told is gs the degeneracy in the system number of channels and each channel is going to give you e square by h for conductance that's what it is that is the landover vertical formalism and this is applicable only for reflectionless transport okay if you have reflection scattering in the system then you will not get this and this is not valid this is for perfect reflectionless transport where you have you are injecting carriers from one end and the carriers are reaching the other end okay and for each channel this is the e square by h is the conductance then if there is spin degeneracy you multiply by 2 if there are values you multiply whatever the value number number of values then you multiply the again lando levels or other channels by that number again okay so that is this n here now i have a system where i'm injecting and removing electron across mu and from mu and mu 3 it doesn't matter which direction you do okay then i'm going to measure the voltage between this mu4 and mu2 these two probes okay so these are voltage probes and these are current probes that means you inject channel current here and remove current here but you don't need to worry worry about whether you are removing or putting because you can also apply a oscillating voltage between 1 and 3 i have four contacts 1 2 3 4 those are the contact number okay so all you can consider that mu1 and mu2 mu3 can act as source and sink for electrons and mu4 and mu2 are voltage probes they cannot do they cannot take electrons or they cannot donate electrons those are voltage probes they don't do anything they don't uh, anything to the conduction they only just sense what is the potential there they cannot take any electrons or they cannot inject an electron those are ideal voltage probes and most of the voltage probes are pretty pretty close to that situation okay whatever you are going to have in an actual experiment all right now the current from 1 to 2 contact from 1 to 2 is given by mu1 okay what are the voltage or chemical potential then degeneracy e by h that is the conductance by the landover vertical formalism and the number of channels 
So now the assumption here is you have a magnetic field. You have a magnetic field, B field, then you can have transport only at the edge. There are no transport in the bulk. So and there are certain number of lander levels, say n inside the Fermi level. What that means there are that many number of lander levels along the edge. Okay, and no transport happens in the bulk. Now I1 to I2, I1 to 2 is given by this formula. When I2 so the I2 to 1, that means the current from 2 to 1 is 0 because all the current, all the electrons flow from 1 to 2, but there are no electron goes from 2 to 1. Whatever the electrons that are reaching 1 are always from 4. Okay. This electron go only here, then coming back is this track. Okay. So it comes back to other edge, goes through this edge goes forward here, come back here. That means 1 to 2 is given by this Landover formula, but 2 to 1 is 0. Similarly, you can also say 2 to 3 is whatever the current goes from 1 to 2. So all this current will go from 2 to 3 because the voltage probe cannot take any current. So whatever it reaches here, all of the, all those electrons will go to 3. But now 3 to 2 is 0 because no current goes through this channel. But 3 to 4, you get again mu 3 gs e, e by h into n. Similarly, 4 to 1, you get the same current because this voltage probe does not take any electrons, it cannot inject or remove electrons. So all those current which starting from 3 will reach here through this path. Okay. So in general, what I can write is I I to I plus 1 probe is this quantity, but the reverse I plus 1 to I is 0. If you number the probes cyclically in this order. Okay. And as I told, the voltage probes do not take any current. So I explained already this, all these things. I1 to 2 is 2 to 3. Whatever goes from here to 2, that will go to 3. That means this voltage probe only can sense. It cannot change anything. What that means is this should follow whatever the potential, whatever the chemical potential at 1. Similarly, this 4 should follow what are the chemical potential here because this is what because this is short. There is there is no resistance for these edge channels that we already discussed. Okay. Edge channels are perfect, resistance less, reflection free 1D channels. That means if you connect two conductors, then here we are not connecting any biasing. There is no biasing here, there is no voltage source here, it's a voltage probe. Okay. What that means is this is going to assume this because the connection from this is shorter to this point. Okay. Now the electrons are flowing in this direction. So this is not shorter this way. This is shorter this way. That means 2 will assume the potential of 1. Similarly, 4 will assume the potential of 3. And 1 and 3 will assume its own potential because that is something which you control by biasing, putting a by current probe. That is the biasing condition. So 1 and 3 will follow whatever you have given. Okay. But 4 and 2 will follow. 4 will follow 3 and 2 will follow 1. Okay. Now the net current is whatever the difference. I1 to 2 minus 4 to 1 and you can substitute all these uh, terms mu1, mu3 and mu2, mu4 and what you will get eventually is V E V 2 4 because it's 1 3 because 1 is same as 2 and 3 is same as 4. So 1 3 is basically 2 4. Mu 1 minus mu 3 is same as mu 2 minus mu 4 because of this condition. Then you will get 
e v24 into gs e by h into n that is your net current so the whole voltage is the net current divided by v24 where 24 is the whole voltage this transverse voltage i net divided by v24 that is gs e h e square h by n because this e into this e that is going to give e square by h into n so what you are seeing here is the whole conductance is given by e square by h into degeneracy gs into n okay but n is the number of channels and the number of channels is something but the number of land levels in this case okay now you can generalize this to multi terminal transport where you have a sample with the many terminal then again you can define voltage and current probes so all the voltage probes on one side will have the same voltage all the same potential and all the current all the voltage other side will have this potential but that is for that is going to follow which direction the with from which direction the current is coming for example if the current is going from here then all these probes will follow the potential of this and the current is going back this direction then all these will follow the potential of this one okay so these are all mu 6 mu 2 or mu 5 mu 3 they all they all will give you the same voltage okay those are the whole voltage but mu 1 should be equal to mu 2 is equal to mu 3 okay similarly mu 4 mu 5 mu 6 that is assuming that the current is flowing this direction reverse through this direction okay that's what you are getting that is why you are getting now rxy there's a whole voltage whole resistance is given by number of channels into mu1 minus mu4 mu1 minus mu4 is same as mu2 minus mu6 because mu2 is same as mu1 and which is same as mu3 minus mu5 so mu2 minus mu6 or it is also same as mu3 minus mu5 okay so this is the situation when you have multi terminal transport now the two probe measurement that means ignore that you don't ignore all these probes okay on the side and if you have only these two and the quantum hall regime if you measure the two probe resistance you will get all this hall resistance so in this case all probes doesn't need to be opposite all it need to do is it need to probe edges in edges which are counter propagating or propagating in the opposite direction for example mu6 mu3 mu3 minus mu6 is same as mu2 minus mu5 so mu3 minus mu6 is same as mu2 minus mu5 because mu5 is mu6 which is same as mu4 mu2 minus mu6 is same as mu2 minus mu4 which is same as mu1 minus mu4 because mu2 is mu1 okay so what that means is if you measure just a two probe resistance that is if you do say you connect a resistance measurement system which actually can measure only which which, which is to probe say um, some kind of um, source measure unit and you measure current and voltage you will get actually the whole resistance or conductance to probe which is not true in the three-dimensional system in a three-dimensional system if you measure this resistance you will get it won't it will not depend on the magnetic field you won't get any whole voltage 
whole voltage in a three-dimensional system, you need to measure always in this direction, along this. But in a perfect quantum hall system, it doesn't matter. As long as you measure two probe like this, you get a whole voltage or you can measure across. This also will give you the same value. That is because the edges are resistance, resistance plus one dimensional channels. Okay. All right. Now, let us revisit the quantization that we mentioned here. What we are seeing here is the Hall conductance and the inverse of that is the Hall resistance that is quantized in N, the number of channels. And the quantized value is E square by H, that is the conductance and H by E square will be the resistance. Okay. Now, just to understand this a little bit further, let's consider the picture that we drawn in the last class where you have the states, continuum, continuum of states and the B is equal to zero that is going to get split into different Landau levels when you apply magnetic field and this Landau levels spacing will increase and Landau levels will expand and the spacing also will increase when you increase the B field. So I have a snapshots of various uh, magnetic field or as the field as the field is increased the snapshots of the Landau level position. So I have three Landau levels below the Fermi level which is here, here two and half, here two Landau levels below the Fermi level. So the action of going from this field to this field is you are reducing the number of Landau levels below the Fermi level by one. Okay. Now we know that filling factor or the number of Lando levels available is actually proportional to B field. It's, it's, sorry, it's inversely proportional to B field. Okay. So what that means is when you ram the B, when you ram the B field, you are going to reduce the number of Lando levels below the Fermi level one at a time. Okay, one by one. But every time you reduce it by one Lando level, you will miss one level at the edge because number of edge channels which are available for transport that is given by this uh, N here in the Landor form formula is basically the number of Landor levels because number of Landor levels in the bulk, each Landor level will contribute to one edge state. Okay, So when you cut one Landor level in the bulk, you lose one edge. When you lose one edge, you lose conductivity by this quantum E square by H or it will increase resistance by H by E square. So the action of wrapping the magnetic field will be taking from a situation with the n number of Landau levels and going to n minus 1. In this case and this case you have Hall resistance is given by E square by H into number of channels because there are the bulk is not conducting and the states are only at the edge this is what you are going to measure just as we discussed in the previous slide now the moment this being crossed then there is a change because that is where you are going to change from n number of channels to n plus one number of channels okay so then suddenly the whole resistance will jump by e square by h and e square by h is um, 25.813 kilo ohm that is e square by h that is what I mean, I mean, sorry e square by h is the conductance conductivity and h by e square okay let me rewrite this. This is h by e square is 25.813 kilo ohm. Okay, that's what it is here. So you will see a jump both in the conductance and also in the resistance. The resistance 
is given by this formula here h by e square into 1 by nu because you start with one single channel even the field is very high when you reduce the field you will slowly pull the land rollers back into the fermi level below the fermi level then every time one level comes in you have one extra channel okay that means the resistance will reduce by 1 by nu this this number the resistance is going to show oscillations as per square by this okay h by e square into 1 by nu nu is an integer or the conductance will decrease by the quantum conductance okay so that is what is going to give you this step like feature or the condensed hall plateaus this jump or this vanishing of lander levels across the fermi level now whenever there are integer number of levels the rxx the resistance that you measure along the edge will be zero as we discussed because the edge states are reflectionless states with zero resistance that is why the green trace here is showing you zero resistance whenever there's a plateau then there are well defined number of crisp number of lander levels and there are no half fill levels that is going to give you a plateau in the rxy but that's going to give you a zero resistance in the rxx so whenever the plateau is going to change from the order from 1 to 2 or 2 to 3 then there is a lander level is crossing the fermi level that time you have states for back scattering so you are one the along the direction of propagation or rxx you are going to get a peak in the resistance okay that is what you are seeing in this plot so this uh, subnikov uh, shubnikov d has oscillation effect and the quantum hall effect those are those two effects are actually the same the same effect or the two sides of the same coin because of same reason so but shubnikov d has d has oscillation you will see whenever the cylinder was crossing but quantum hall effect you will see only in 2d systems okay in three dimensional system you will not have this condition met so you will not get this condensation condition because you don't have a perfect 1d channel there in three dimensional systems you would see oscillations in the rxx but you will not see the condensation in rxy so just to summarize the the last four lectures on quantum hall quantum hall effect is a touchstone phenomena of two dimensional transport two dimensional system quantum system and the shubnikov de has oscillation is the linear resistance rxx which the, the which is used for characterizing the samples and calculating its carrier concentration but it's kind of ironical that in three dimensional system the linear resistance is independent field rxs has no field dependence but in two dimensional system rxs depends on the field as much as the rxy so in two dimensional system hall resistance is not really used for carrier concentration calculation it's always the rxx but in three dimensional system rxx is kind of useless nothing you don't get any information from that other than the conductivity you the you rely mostly on the rxy the hall resistance but the hall resistance in two dimensional system is used for other purpose such as the uh, standardization of resistance quantum metrology and observing various other quantum interesting exotic phenomena but rxx is what is used for characterizing the material all right so i think that is enough at this point as far as the scope of this lecture series is concerned for quantum hall effect in the next lecture we will discuss another 
uh, feature of quantum transport of, of diffusive quantum transport all right